assalamu alaikum this is lecture 16 of data security and encryption and in this lecture we are going to discuss about random bit generation and stream ciphers so here are the lecture contents in this lecture we are going to discuss some principles of pseudo random number generation system and then Uh, we will briefly view the use of random numbers in cryptographic algorithms then there are different methods to generate cryptographic uh, random numbers namely as true random number generators pseudo random number generators and prf which is a pseudo random function then uh, there will be some pseudo random function generator requirements and uh, analysis of uh, its algorithm design so one of the main function of cryptographic algorithm is the generation of random bit streams random bit streams are used in a wide variety of context including the key generation and encryption one strategy which will be uh, which was recently dominated in encrypted uh, encryption applications uh, it computes bits uh, independently using an algorithm this class of algorithms is known as deterministic random bit generator the second strategy which produces bit non deterministically using the physical source that produces some sort of random output this class of random generator is wrong, known as true random number generator so the random numbers play a very important role in the use of encryption for various network security applications so a number of network security algorithms and protocols based on cryptography may make use of random binary numbers for example a key distribution and reciprocal authentication scheme uses uh, random numbers in such schemes two communicating parties cooperate by exchanging messages to distribute keys and Uh, then authenticate each other session key generation also uses the random numbers and it is implemented with a secret key for symmetric encryption which is generated for the use of particular transaction or a session and the key is valid for a short period of time this key is generally called a session key random numbers are also used in generation of keys for rsa public key encryption algorithm which we will discuss in the upcoming lectures and random numbers are also useful for the generation of bit stream for the symmetric stream cipher which will be discussed in this lecture so this wide variety of application give rise to two distinct requirements for the sequence of random numbers named as randomness and unpredictability so traditionally the generation of a sequence of allegedly random numbers being random in some well defined statistical sense has been a concern therefore two criteria are used to validate that a sequence of numbers is random the first one is uniform distribution and the second criteria is independence the uniform distribution states that the frequency of occurrence of ones and zeros should be approximately equal this means that the distribution of the bits in the sequence should be uniform there should be almost equal number of zeros and ones in the stream of our encryption encrypted text independence refers to uh, that no one subsequence of the 
sequence can be inferred from the other so there should be no dependence of the one sub sequence on the other however there are well defined tests for determining the sequence of bits uh, uh, matches a particular distribution such as uniform distribution there is no such test to prove the inter independence however uh, a number of tests can be applied to demonstrate that if sequence does not exhibit independence the general strategy is to apply a number of such tests until the confidence that the independence exists is sufficiently strong therefore uh, if each of a uh, number of tests fail to show that the sequence of bit is not independent then we can have a high level of confidence that the sequence is in fact independent so in applications such as uh, reciprocal authentication session key generation and stream ciphers the requirement is not just the sequence of numbers to be statistically random but that the successive members of sequence are also unpredictable so with the true random number sequences each number is statistically independent of other numbers in the sequence and therefore it can be unpredictable so true random numbers have their limitations such as inefficiency so it is more common to implement algorithms that generate sequence of numbers that appear to be random however certain care must be taken uh, that an opponent uh, should not be able to predict the future elements of the sequence on the basis of earlier elements so as defined earlier cryptographic applications typically make use of algorithms for the random number generation these algorithms are deterministic and therefore produce a sequence of numbers that are not statistically random so if the algorithm is good enough the resulting sequence will pass many tests of randomness and it will be referred as pseudo random number so you can see that it is very difficult uh, to generate a deterministic algorithm to produce the pseudo random numbers that is under most circumstances the pseudo random numbers will perform as well as they were random for a given use so this figure contrasts a true random number generator with two forms of pseudo random number generators as you can see the first part of the diagram there is a true random number generator so it is based on some source of true randomness which can be an entropy source uh, from which you are getting the information so true random number generator converts this number to a binary number that will be a random bit stream however the other two number other two functions are the forms of pseudo random number generator first is pseudo random number generator itself then is a, there is a pseudo random function so both use the deterministic algorithm as described earlier and there is a seed value for both of the algorithms and this seed value is fed to the deterministic algorithm which produces a pseudo random bit stream and also the seed is incremented to produce the next pseudo random bit stream similarly in the pseudo random function you can see you have a deterministic algorithm you have a seed and you complement the seed with a context specific values these values can be related to the application process or user identification and similarly this seed value is fed to the deterministic algorithm and it produces a pseudo random value 
which is again incremented to uh, a next seed with the context specific value to generate the net value. So as discussed earlier, a true random number generator takes the input of a source that is effectively random. So the source is referred as entropy source and it is drawn from the physical environment of the computer and it includes a keystroke timing pattern, this electrical activity, mouse movement, instantaneous values of the system clock. That means it is a random number or a random value from a random source. So you cannot actually guess these random numbers. Therefore, these are referred as true random number generators. So the source or the combination of source sources serve as an input to the algorithm that produces a random binary output. So the true random number generator may simply involve conversion of an analog source to a binary output. The true random number generator may involve additional processing to overcome any bias in the source. So in contrast to the previous uh, true random gen number generator, there are two pseudo random number generators. So they take the uh, input as a fixed value called the seed and produces a sequence of outputs bits using a deterministic algorithm. So quite often the seed is generated by a true random number generator. So initial seed, uh, seed is generally uh, a random value. So the output bit stream is determined solely by the input value or values so that an adversary who knows the algorithm and the seed can reproduce the entire bit stream. So other than the number of bits produced, there is no difference between pseudo random number generator and pseudo random function. So there are two different forms of pseudo random number generators as discussed earlier. One is pseudo random number generator and next is pseudo random function. A pseudo random function generator, sorry, a pseudo random number generator is an algorithm that is used to produce an open ended sequence of bits and it is used as input to symmetric stream ciphers and it is a common application for an open ended sequence of bits. Similarly, the pseudo random function uses uh, used to produce a pseudo random string of bits of some fixed length and examples its examples are metric encryption key and nonces as described in lecture number 7 and 8 so other than the number of bits produced there is no difference between a pseudo random number generator and pseudo random function the same algorithm can be used in both applications. Both require a seed. Both must exhibit randomness and unpredictability. Further, a uh, pseudo-random number generator application may also employ context-specific input. So the basic requirement for a pseudo-random number generator uh, when a pseudo-random gener number generator or a pseudo random function is used for a cryptographic application is that an adversary or an attacker who does not know the seed is unable to determine a pseudo random string. So the requirement for the secrecy of the output of pseudo random function or pseudo random uh, number generator leads to specific requirements in the areas of randomness, unpredictability and characteristics of the seed. So for example, uh, if the pseudo random bit stream is used in a stream cipher, then the knowledge of pseudo random bit stream would be enable adversary to recover from the plain text. So randomness is also desired in pseudo random number generators. The generated bit stream needs to be uh, appearing random even though if it is deterministic. 
there is no single test that can determine the uh, of a, if a pseudo random number generator generates numbers that have the characteristics of randomness so if the pseudo random number generator exhibits randomness on the basis of multiple tests then it can be assumed to satisfy the randomness requirement so nist sp8022 specifies that the test should seek to establish three characteristics of a pseudo random number generator deterministic algorithm the number one is uniformity number two is scalability and number three is consistency a uniformity defines that at any point in the generation of a sequence of random or pseudo random bits the occurrence of zero or one is equally likely that means they have 50% of chance to produce zero as a output bit and a 50% chance to produce one as output bit as a result the expected number of zeros or ones is likely is equal to n by 2 of the uh, total n sequence length characters scalability refers that if any of test uh, applicable to a sequence can also be applied to sub sequences extracted at random so if sequence is random then any such uh, extracted sub sequence should also be random if the whole is random then the part must also be random therefore any extracted sub sequence should pass any test for the randomness in the scalability so consistency refers to the behavior of a generator uh, that it must be consistent across the starting values for example seeds and it is inadequate to test the pseudo random number generator based on the output from a single seed or a true random number generator on the basis of output produced from a single physical output therefore sp822 lists about 15 separate tests of randomness so an understanding of these tests require basic knowledge of statistical analysis however we are not going into the discussion of statistical analysis there uh, instead there are three flavors of test which we will discuss shortly here the three tests are referred as frequency test runs test and more universal statistical test so the frequency test is the most basic test and it must be included in any test suit for testing the random of your encryption algorithm the purpose of frequency test is to determine whether the number of ones or zeros in a sequence is approximately the same as would be expected for a truly random sequence runs test focus on the test uh, uh, focuses on this test is the total number of runs in the sequence where a run is an uninterrupted sequence of identical bits bounded before and after with a bit of an opposite value the purpose of this test is to determine whether the number of runs of ones and zeros of various lengths is as expected for a random sequence so more universal test focuses uh, is the number uh, of bits between matching patterns the purpose is to detect whether there is, whether or not the sequence can be significantly compressed without loss of information so a significantly incomprehensible compressible sequence is considered to be non random so the second characteristic was uh, unpredictability so a stream of pseudo random numbers should exhibit two forms of unpredictability forward unpredictability and backward unpredictability so in forward unpredictability 
if the seed is unknown the next output bit in the sequence should be unpredictable in spite of any knowledge previous bit in the sequence oppositely on the backward unpredictability it should not be feasible to determine the seed from the knowledge of any generated values there should be no correlation between a seed and any values generated from the seed should be evident and the correlation should not be evident so each element of the sequence should appear to be outcome of an independent random event whose probability is 1 by 2 so the same set of tests for randomness also provides a set uh, of tests for unpredictability a random sequence will have no correlation with a fixed value that is referred as seed for many cryptographic applications the seed that serves as input to pseudo random number generator must be secure and unpredictable you must use a seed that is not easily guessable from a statistical analysis the seed itself must be a random or pseudo random number because the pseudo random number generator is a deterministic algorithm and if the adversary can deduce the seed the output can also be determined so typically the seed is generated by a true random number generator which is based on some input that is derived from the entropy function so typically the seed is generated by uh, a true random number generator as shown in this figure so the input of the uh, the input source of a true random number generator can be an entropy source which is fed to uh, which is which produces a seed which is fed to a pseudo random number generator and which produces a pseudo random bit string so important consideration here is to produce a seed which must not be easily guessable by an attacker you must use a random stream of input which can be derived from a computer a clock or any keystrokes which are random in nature which is fed to a true random number generator then it produces a random or pseudo random seed cryptographic pseudo random number generator have been the subject of much research over the years and a wide variety of algorithms have been developed so these fall into the two categories the first category is the purpose built algorithm these algorithms are devised specifically for the purpose of generating pseudo random bit stream however there are other algorithms that are based on the existing cryptographic algorithm and they have the effect of randomizing input data so one example of purpose built uh, algorithms is rp4 which we will discuss in the next lecture overall the three broad categories of cryptographic algorithms are commonly used to create pseudo random number generators these categories are symmetric block ciphers asymmetric block ciphers and hash functions and message authentication code all these three categories will be examined separately in the next lectures so any of these approaches can yield a cryptographically strong pseudo random number generator so a purpose built algorithm may be provided by an operating system for general use for applications that already use the certain cryptographic algorithms for encryption or authentication it makes sense to reuse the same code for pseudo random number generators therefore all of these approaches are in common use 
this concludes today's lecture in this lecture we discussed some principles of pseudo random number generators and why the random numbers are so much of importance in the cryptographic application then we saw how the cryptographic applications use the random numbers and we saw three different functions or generators to produce the random number the most important function was true random number generator and it generates random numbers from an input source which is not accessible to an attacker pseudo random number gener uh, generator uses a seed which is derived from a true random number generator to produce a pseudo random output of bits similarly pseudo random function uses the seed and some context specific value to produce the pseudo random function value then we saw some requirements to pr produce a pseudo random uh, number generator algorithm if you want to read more about the topic you can study the chapter 8 of the recommended book or you can ask any question using the designated mediums or question and answer session thank you very much